We're rounding up the significance and the ramification of India joining three other countries, the US, Russia and China in its anti-satellite test with SNI Editor-in-Chief Nitin Gokhale and Surya Gagadhar, our editor. Surya, you were present at uh, one of the briefings of the DRDO ahead. The DRDO chairman was there, Deputy NSA Pankaj Saran as well. And they outlined a timeline. It was the seeds were sown in August 2014. Maybe two years back, the Prime Minister gave a go-ahead. In the last six months, it's been literally around the clock work. 150 scientists or so, many of them didn't know the final purpose of uh, what was actually happening. Yeah. I think there was a small team that was involved. And given the fact that it had to be a secret operation, not that the actual act of carrying out the test can be kept secret because everybody is watching, <laughs> including and NASA. And the NOTAM was issued. Absolutely, right? the NOTAM was issued. And I think the uh, point which uh, Satish Reddy, the DRDO chief, um, kind of focused on was one, the issue of debris, which yeah. is you know all over the place. And the fact that there was no uh, danger from the debris. And you also had Pankaj Saran clarifying that uh, the State Department itself said we have noted the Indian explanation that the debris is not a danger. And given the fact that we uh, targeted the satellite at uh, low Earth orbit, uh, the, ex the, ex the uh, general sense is it will uh, decay in about 45 days time. So uh, in that sense, the test went off well. Uh, demonstrator showing our capability and beyond that, we'll, we'll have wait and see. Nitin, what next? Because uh, some analysts say we don't need another test since the deterrence has already been demonstrated. but. You would be looking forward, some analysts saying you should be looking forward in terms of whether it's jamming technologies or other cyber technologies that are used uh, in the future, which India hasn't invested as yet so much in. I think uh, the DRDO chief himself made it clear that there should be uh, no requirement for another test. That is pretty clear. But uh, what I think the decision makers and the strategic uh, decision makers are uh, looking at uh, certainly is that uh, space is definitely going to be the fourth dimension of war after land, air and sea. And uh, if that be so, now that India has demonstrated this capability of uh, using uh, you know, anti-satellite uh, weapon or uh, creating an anti-satellite weapon, what should be the uh, next steps? So could it be that uh, there would be a space security policy to begin with? Should India uh, do it or not? There is no, again, no denying the fact that India should have one. Uh, space security policy. Then there are other steps that are being talked about. So we are far away from weaponization of space, uh, but uh, there is no harm in uh, planning ahead because uh, now that India is the fourth country after the three that you mentioned, uh, at least India has avoided the trap that it was in in the 1974 nuclear blast NPT. And, and, and NPT. So if any uh, policy is put in place uh, internationally, India will have to be part of it uh, because of the uh, the club that we have joined now. So that's where it begins. But I can explain a little more what, what is planned a uh, little ahead. But uh, there are other issues uh, which I think um, uh, Satish Reddy mentioned from what I was reading. And I believe that they had uh, briefed uh, a group of uh, very eminent uh, experts uh, before the press conference uh, where the three deputy NSAs, the NSA himself, and uh, some of the former chiefs of the DRDO, ISRO, uh, Air Force people, they were all there. And in that it was made clear that uh, uh, India did this because uh, the capability had to be demonstrated. And like Surya said, and uh, India has the capability of hitting a satellite at 1000 kilometers. Yeah. And yet, uh, it was done uh, at 283, if I am not mistaken. Was it 283 yeah. Around that, yeah. Around, Around that. that. Yeah. So that was an important point to uh, you know, sort of demonstrate to the world. Uh, but that's where it stands at the moment. The, the same point and that you had also mentioned earlier of the low Earth orbit, Leo orbit, the satellite, our own satellite being hit there, so that there's no space debris. Now, there are some reports suggesting that space debris has gone up to 1,000 and 2,000 kilometers, though uh, Indian officials are saying no. The International Space Station is way above and it's not at risk either. So that was one primary concern uh, or that they took it hitting this altitude of about 280. Yeah, in fact, I think the, the point uh, Satish Reddy made is that uh, the, they carried out simulations before uh, actually doing all the test, you know. And the simulations was directed at ensuring that the debris, where, how far it would spread. And uh, it was an internationally known software that was used to carry out the simulation. So uh, from that they determined that there was no danger to the space station. In any case, the space station is 120 kilometers yeah. above. You know. 
So in that sense, the danger of anything flying up there was pretty low. Um, in that sense, we ensured kind of, uh, you know, nothing went, uh, nothing untoward happened. The simulations that were carried out, now there were reports earlier that there was a February test that failed. But they went on to clarify that that was actually the electronic targeting. Test, targeting test, of, yeah. Uh, that, was, that was done, that was one clarification. The second was that the uh, International Space Station yeah. was at uh, over French Guyana and uh, diagonally, uh, I think 183 kilometers above uh, the, uh, the the kinetic uh, collusion that took place between uh, the satellite and uh, the kill vehicle, as they call it, which went and hit yeah. the satellite. So that I think that uh, care was taken. And what is more interesting and more creditable is that 90% of the technology yeah. uh, is indigenous, indigenous. and uh, therefore uh, I think this is something that uh, one must commend Indian scientists, both ISRO and. Um, the uh, DRDO scientists and I think in a way it's a very very significant milestone because going forward there will be many more uh, fallouts and spin out uh, spin off of the uh, test that has been done. So just one question I have you know this um, the DRDO chief said uh, with this capability now demonstrated uh, we have the capability for multiple launches you know. Does this have any multiple targets? Multiple targets. Multiple, multiple targets. targets. Yes, multiple multiple targets. targets yeah. So, in that sense, does it in any way link up with our um, MERV capability, which is being developed? I know this is a technical question. Well, I, I haven't really thought about it, or I haven't asked anybody. I don't. I am not a technical expert, but certainly India's uh, ballistic missile uh, defense system is at an advanced stage. Yeah. Several missiles have been tested, and uh, therefore, this was a logical uh, progression in a way. Uh, to take it forward and uh, I, I think uh, uh, the fact that uh, India not only announced the test uh, but also demonstrated to the world that most of it can be done indigenously and there has been no UN cry over this and people have just said that let's have some uh, you know, uh, safeguards in place as we go forward. But just the other point that I wanted to make is that within India uh, the government will have to now take a decision of uh, forming an apex decision making body with a proper structure which Man is mandated uh, which has got multi stakeholders in it not just uh, DRDO or defense but uh, ISRO science and technology and then uh, look at uh, the question where it should be placed about command and control uh, if this happens because uh, again uh, that question will come like SFC can it be in the uh, strategic forces command or uh, would it be somewhere else? That questions will have to be debated. And one point that's perhaps not stressed enough is, like you were pointing out, this is probably a modified version of the EXO BMD. Uh, the whole process of India's ballistic missile defense. Right. Uh, there, there is some movement there also, even though this is an ASAT test. Of course, it is. In fact, uh, India's missile uh, program, as you know, is, has been one of the most successful programs. Uh, uh, India has demonstrated uh, not just BMD, but there is this Prithvi uh, defense uh, vehicle or, or the uh, you know the missile which can uh, uh, destroy an incoming target or an incoming missile that they have done a uh, number of times uh, have demonstrated that. So I think uh, the ISRO, uh, the DRDO scientist uh, and the missile and strategic program is has really demonstrated its ability to uh, master complex uh, I would say technology because in this uh, if I remember correctly from one of the scientists. Uh, two things that have not uh, really been focused upon is the uh, IR seeker, the infrared seeker that was developed by DRDO and uh, also uh, the, I don't know what is it called because scientifically I won't know, but the, uh, the control mechanism uh, or the thing for, because remember this uh, kill vehicle uh, hit uh, at 10 kilometers a second, it was traveling that fast. And I think uh, the distance between the launch or the time between the launch and uh, the uh, hit yeah. is about uh, 20 seconds or something. Yeah, yeah. So uh, imagine to have that kind of control, and accuracy, with accuracy uh, 10 centimeters uh, yeah. accuracy, precision, that they, yeah, precision. precision. So I think the scientists have really demonstrated they are the unsung heroes in that sense. Uh, Nitin is mentioning no human cry as such. There were some analysts who were initially saying we should wait and watch to see if there are any sanctions like after the nuclear test from the West. And, Initially, uh, there were reports, but that again was clarified by Indian officials that we go by what the U.S. State Department says, yeah. and uh, they are going to continue with their space, uh, space programs with ISRO and Indian. Yeah. Uh, I think the I think the point to understand is that first of all, this technology isn't very new. You know, it dates back to the Cold War. 
Uh, after that, uh, Russia and the US didn't do any further testing. China stepped in at 2007. I think that's really what triggered our own concerns because we have nearly 80 odd satellites up there. And the last thing we want is somebody to have the ability to blackmail us into, you know, um, in a sense so that our satellites get endangered. So in that sense, we had to demonstrate this capability. No further tests are required at this point. Um, I think uh, the decision on whether the weaponization of space proceeds or not, well, that's something which uh, the larger international community has to look at. And again, when you're looking at relations uh, between uh, the NASA and ISRO in various things, including uh, human travel, etc., there were initial reports that suggested that NASA was backing out of at least four programs, and then subsequently a statement came out saying that because based on White House guidance, yeah. we are still <laughs> going to have. Well, exactly what happened internally, I don't know, but uh, the fact that the NASA chief made the announcement about the debris at a town hall meeting of his own employees. Terrible, terrible thing. Is it's what it's <laughs> Maybe there was some concern within. Yeah, because they said the debris that. might travel upwards yeah. is what their uh, issue yeah. was. But I think the other, uh, other uh, point to note in this, exactly 20 years ago or 21 years ago when India carried out the nuclear test, uh, the US came down, US and the Europeans came down yeah. heavily uh, and uh, sanctioned ISRO, sanctioned DRDO and denied uh, so many uh, high-end technologies. Uh, but in this case, yeah. uh, I think, uh, you know, silence. India's more, yeah, silence and <laughs> I think that demonstrates how f forward we have moved in these 20-21 mm. years. And therefore, I think uh, it's something that if we look back 20 years later, this is a very significant yeah, milestone yeah, in yeah, that sense. Yeah. And the point that you brought out earlier, which is that it's not just the technology demonstrator or, or uh, that India has successfully carried out, it's also keeping in mind what happened with the NPT, the, the world structure. Uh, India is against weaponization of uh, outer space and uh, this again was not putting a weapon in space technically so you beat that. Yeah. But looking at how India has uh, followed and the government continuously says that no international treaties were uh, violated or, or nothing was violated and our position even uh, when you're talking about prevention of uh, the arms race in uh, outer space for us etc. 1962 the uh, disarmament conference etc. Yes. We are, we will now be on the high table if and when some kind of negotiation is done on... I mean, it's an advantage that India has, unlike what happened in NPT. India will have an advantage of whenever a framework uh, of rules and regulations will be put in, India will be at the high table. So I think uh, that's another gain. And uh, remember, this is being seen in these strategic circles as a very important uh, uh, stage in India's evolution as a space power uh, or a missile power, whatever you want to call it. Because uh, present at the uh, press conference was a Deputy National yeah. Security Advisor of <laughs> unusual, Strategic yeah. Affairs, yeah. Pankaj Saran, uh, which is unusual and I think there were other, uh, I think other two Deputy NSAs were also there if I am not yeah, mistaken. There were a whole lot of big wigs around. A whole lot of big wigs around. Including former ones. Former Dr. ones. And others, yeah, yeah, so there was ISRO, former ISRO chairman, there was I think uh, DRDO chiefs mm. like S. Christopher and then Avinash Chandar yeah. and all these other, spe other people were there. So I think uh, India is now uh, very confident about its abilities, about its uh, scientists taking the next step forward. All that uh, I think is, uh, is something uh, is, a, is a positive and I think uh, we should look at uh, how uh, space can be then applied for multiple things, not just uh, weaponization. Sure. But as it is, ISRO is doing uh, multiple things about uh, floods, about agriculture and uh, urban planning. Uh, so I think this is a good synergy between DRDO and ISRO. And even though they mentioned that there is no need for a, another test now, there was a hint of some sorts of other technologies being worked on which we had talked about whether it's lasers or... Yeah, they're looking at uh, directed weapons. energy weapons, uh, lasers of course. So, um, but uh, Christopher didn't, I mean sorry, um, Satish Reddy didn't want to talk too much about it. He said these are all, um, you know, uh, classified technologies, we are working on them. But there is no decision from the government as to you actually go about weaponizing or anything. So this is something we are looking at in the future. Uh, fortunately, at least we are working on it. So we had a confirmation from the highest level. Suja Gangadhan and Nitin Gokhale, I guess the uh, official line which they gave out there that uh, deterrence is the best defense and it's been successfully deployed to perfectly sums up uh, what happened during that ASAT test. Thanks so much, Suja. Thank you.